हेलो गुड इवनिंग सर बटन पोट ना आ वनकम यार पेश रहते हैं नमस्ते सर दिस इज श्रावंति आई एम वर्किंग एज कमोडिटी एनालिस्ट हियर ओके यू सर स्पीक तमिल सर वनकम सर श्री वनकम यहां पर का आने के कॉन्फ्रेंस में नाना पेश रहते हैं श्री बच्चन बाबू ओके ओके नाइस मीटिंग यू हाउ आर यू ऑल गुड सर ऑल गुड थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच इपो uh who is going to be interviewing me sir it is a broad set of questions are there we will just yeah you may ask uh, uh see uh, ninga you want my response in english yes yeah we are recording no this no problem yeah. i will respond in english okay sir you may shoot yeah uh, just uh, like you know take us through the journey of idayam that's the first uh, like you know because that's where we start with okay see our uh, four fathers that is my grandfather and his three brothers they started business sometime in 1940 40 yes they they were they were in business for a very long time but they ventured into sesame oil crushing in 1940 okay Okay. and uh, they had business all over uh, this part of the world they had business in colombo they had business in rangoon okay they had business in karachi and bombay they were basically commission agents okay their job was to sell the food grains which uh, come from north india <laughs> to the various wholesalers in uh, tamil nadu okay for whatever they do they get their commission okay and if they keep it in their godowns they get rent mm -hmm. and if they invest money give advance and invest money they get interest so okay. their revenue is interest rent and commission and uh, the stock that they handle remains the stock of the principal so on a consignment basis they were holding the stock yeah okay so yeah so from a consignment agent like you know when the shift to manufacturing happened uh see in uh, 1940 okay there was a big buyer of sesame seeds from our company in 1940 okay. or even before 1940 okay and that particular gingerly oil manufacturer or till oil manufacturer he became insolvent oh okay once he became insolvent we we sort of had a uh, i must say collapse in our sesame business okay so the elders sat down and decided that it is time they start forward integration okay so from being a commodity trader as we lost the business we started getting into manufacturing of edible oils so that happened exactly 82 years before oh sometime in 1940 and they introduced the brand vv okay okay that is the name of my great grandfather vv that's his name his grandfather i mean his father's name was bel murgan his name was vanniyanada Okay. so it became vv okay so with that brand we started gingerly oil we started even coconut oil okay maybe yeah. you heard of vvd coconut oil yeah 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 that is one and one from our group oh, okay but today i mean of course in 1940 it was all one okay in 1943 there was a family partition okay between the grandfathers so the company became uh, four divided companies right okay. four independent units and one of them happened to be happens to be vvd okay. okay the other one is vvs the other one is vvr and our company is 
V V V. Yeah. We call it even three V. Three V. Okay. My grandfather was uh, uh, saluted as three V. Okay. If somebody asks whether three V is in at home or is away, they will ask three V. You no. Know? Okay. Because his initials were V V, and his name also started in V. So people called him three V. Okay. So V specialized in uh, sesame oil, right? Okay. Right from 1943, we went on to become uh, uh, quite a popular brand. Mm -hmm. And our earlier brand was Anandam. Okay. Maybe you heard of Anandam. Yes, yes, Anandam Nalane. Yeah. In 1986, there was a family partition between my uncles and my father. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we brought in the brand Idem. Okay. By Idem, we mean heart. Yeah. Idem is Hirdai. Uh, Idem brand, when was it launched? It was done in 1986, 1st of December. Okay. Wow. Sir, how do you remember the dates? <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, that's a very, <laughs> see, I cannot forget my birthday. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So my father, you know, people used to ask, is Idem at home? Okay. When they say is Idem at home, they meant my father. Ah. Now I am I am known as Idem Muttu. So Mutu. our brand name has become a prefix to our name, you know. Okay. So interesting. And, uh, you believe me, when we started in 1986, or even uh, when I came to business, it was 1978. Mm -hmm. And then we were only in two districts of Tamil Nadu. Okay. So I wanted to be known all over Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. We started working. We organized a door-to-door -door campaign okay. in selected cities of Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. And that door-to-door -door campaign brought us a very big market mm -hmm. because there was no competition. So the main reason for our success is lack of competition. Okay. And I think that remains even till date. <laughs> you are right. You are right. You are right. Same thing with our groundnut oil. Uh -huh. uh, we have been. Uh, we are the largest in groundnut oil in Tamil Nadu, whereas we are the largest uh, sesame oil maker in India. So currently, what is your volume, sir? Then see, our volume has been thousand four hundred tons. For more than 14 years. This is per uh, month? That is per month. Mm -hmm. And you will be surprised to know that has been the case for the past 14 years. Okay. Starting. You understand what is 14 when I say? Yeah. 14 years is the period the Lord Rama was in the forest. <laughs> so similarly, we had to be satisfied with the volume for 14 years stagnant volume this is still 2019 okay after 2019 you know what happened in the world in 2019 covid yes okay. covid happened in 2019 and our business started picking up wow today we are we are doing more than 1,600 tons. Okay. And all the credit goes to COVID. Because during COVID, mm -hmm. um, the uh, hotels, restaurants, catering establishments had to close. Correct. So people had to cook at home. Mm -hmm. And people were more became more health conscious. And they went for the traditional edible oils like sesame oil or tilka tail. So we got a good business and our business has gone up um, from 1,400 to 1,600 tons every month. And we had a beautiful experience with respect to groundnut oil. Mm -hmm. Groundnut oil, we were 300 tons for more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. 300 tons per month. Okay. And in COVID, we became 600 tons per month. Oh. And now with the Soviet Russia and Ukraine war going on, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. This month we are doing thousand two hundred tons. Incredible. I think okay. that is a shift in the in the most healthy way, like you know, in the direction of like you know health. No, it's because thanks to Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. Generally, elevated oil prices, especially imported oil prices, have like you know made people think of the value of traditional oils, and it's a nice shift. And uh, how much of these volumes is in the bulk segment, and how much is in retail pack sir? It is hundred percent retail. Oh wow. Okay, so your SKUs, uh, the the largest SKU is one kg pouch. I will, say, I will say it is five liter. Five liter can uh, that uh, tins. Five liter containers. Containers. Okay. 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 Great. And and where do you you know distribute currently uh, your sesame oil specifically? Is it Pan India or is it large see, South India? See, we work. To build a market from Kanyakumari to Chennai, okay, which is Tamil Nadu, okay, but people of Tamil Nadu they are all over the world, okay. For example, Sundar Pichai is from Tamil Nadu, you know, yes, and Sundar Pichai is in US, yeah. So people are there all over the world from Tamil Nadu. So when we worked in Tamil Nadu for expanding our business. For establishing our business, mm -hmm. you'll be surprised to know our market is from Toronto to Sydney. Wow, end to end yeah. global in footprint. In the have. northwest, we have our uh, stock in Toronto, oh, in the okay. northwest, and in the southeast, we have Sydney. In Sydney, also we have our products. Oh. Wherever the Tamil population is, mm -hmm. our product is. So, better question to ask is how is your split in volumes between domestic and international market? Eighty percent Tamil Nadu, uh -huh. ten percent rest of India, okay, and ten percent all over the world. Okay, and do you see like you know the volumes growing up in the international segment also? Yes, yeah, it is. It is natural, right? Uh, okay, uh, it is natural because. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm not very sure that the domestic increase will be matched internationally because the customers when they go abroad and when they look for something from India, they go for the best. Yeah. yeah. So already we have done so well as far as international market is concerned. But as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, you know, mm -hmm. Tamil Nadu goes for a product. 80% of Tamil Nadu goes for an oil which is cheap. Yeah. This is not the case with the Tamils established all over the world. Yeah, correct. They have the purchasing power, so they straight away go for uh, top quality products like them. Mm -hmm. Whereas customers in Tamil Nadu, they don't go for top quality. Only 20% of the population goes for top quality and 80% goes for a edible oil that is cheap. Yeah. So now the cheaper edible oils have become very expensive. Yeah. So people have no choice but to come to our uh, fold. Yeah. It's a, yeah, uh, that's what, that's current uh, situation is good for people like you because uh, the differentials have narrowed uh, quite substantially. You know, that is working to your advantage. So yes. we've been main, mentioning a lot about this quality. Uh, uh, let us uh, take a little bit deeper into this quality aspect, starting with the quality of raw material, because that's going to decide uh, how do you define where you buy your raw material from and what should be the quality of the raw material? And what are the kinds of check? Because you are a branded player, what brings that consistency in your quality? Like, you know, uh, can you just take us through the raw material aspect say, a little more in detail? I will say India is almost like a world for us because the entire 12 months we have somebody from India supplying our raw material. That's amazing. See, suppose I am in a, suppose Tamil Nadu is a country. <laughs> suppose Tamil Nadu is a country. Okay. I will be importing about nine months of the year. 
my raw material. Okay. Fortunately, Tamil Nadu is not a country, it's part of India. Okay. So I don't have to import my raw materials. I get my raw material from Andhra Pradesh mm -hmm. when the year, I mean, from March, April, May, then in Tamil Nadu, April, May, June, in Karnataka, June, July, August, September, Maharashtra, okay. October, November, December, Gujarat, November, December, January, Rajasthan, the way it goes. Oh. Then Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh. So the so all through fresh produce you get from yes yes oh and so we are we don't have to import at all okay we we are very happy with the local availability and uh, once it was Tamil Nadu which was number one supplier for us mm -hmm. now later Andhra Pradesh seems to have taken over mm -hmm. and I believe. Gradually, Rajasthan might take over mm -hmm. to be the maximum suppliers for our carbs. Mm -hmm. Now, but uh, the, the, the quality of goods from each of these origin would differ. Some may be a little more bitter, some may be sweeter. So how do you manage like, you know, all these differences from one state to another state? And because as a branded player, your end product quality should meet certain expectations of the customer. How do you balance this out? We have a very simple condition. Okay. And that condition is the free fatty acid must be less than 1.5%. Okay. If it is more than 1.5%, the raw material will be returned back to the seller. Okay. So this quality check of FFA is at your factory gate. Yeah, you are right. Okay. And that is one aspect which is very important. Is there any other aspect? Is there any uh, any other like I think, I think that one measure uh -huh. takes care of every aspect? Okay. okay. Suppose I get a quality which is less than one percent. Okay. We pay premium okay. to the supplier. That is, uh, suppose I bargain for seven thousand rupees. Okay. We'll be paying hundred rupees extra if the free fatty acid is one percent or less. So there is a reward and there is a punishment system, basically. Uh, yes, we give them, we call it premium. Uh -huh. okay. Though we negotiate for 7,000 bucks. Okay. When we get the quality, which is more than uh, bargain for, okay. more than bargain for, mm -hmm. we pay them more money than we bargain for. Okay. And we call it premium. And this is a very unique uh, feature in the market, I'm sure nobody in India is following such a system. So people are very happy. All the important traders, they are very keen that they supply the best quality to us because they get premium from us. You don't check the oil content, like, you know, it should be like, you know, about 52% or 55% or something. Yes, there are two conditions. Okay. One condition is free fatty acid, which I told you already. Okay. The other condition is, let us say, 31 kgs of oil okay. or 32 kgs of oil, depending on the place from where it comes, you know, depending on the regional geographical location. The yield is low in Andhra Pradesh and yield is high in Tamil Nadu mm -hmm. and yield is average in Gujarat and Rajasthan. So when you say 31 and 32 kgs, this is per what cell actually? Per 75 kgs of seeds. Oh, okay. okay. So 75 kg bags. Okay. So these are the two basic uh, criteria for selecting the raw material, which is the oil content and pricing it up. See? So one criteria is for fixing the premium or reject condition. The other one is basically for pricing. For higher oil content, obviously, would fetch a better price and so on and so forth. And you're so fortunate that you get the fresh produce all through the year. And that is uh, the one thing with the increasing transportation cost. Is it, does it make sense for you like, you know, to still move the material all the way from UP to crush it here or have a small crushing plant in UP? Like, you know, have you ever explored that? Uh, yeah, that is a good idea. See, we wanted to establish somewhere in the border of Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. Uh -huh. Because Andhra Pradesh has happens to be a very important uh, 
supplier for us. But uh, somehow that has not happened. We, we feel comfortable working from home, you know, because uh, all the brothers are here still at uh, Virudhanagar and we consider Virudhanagar to be the headquarters for the world. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, yes. so we think we are in the headquarters. Okay. It's very difficult for us to move, you know, okay. though the economy says otherwise. Okay. The economics might say otherwise, uh, but uh, Maybe because there is no competition, we are comfortable here. So let me put this question in a different way. Like, you know, Virudhanagar also happens to be very close to the port city of Tutikore. Have you ever considered like you know, importing from, let's say, Nigeria or Burkina Faso, where it's organic material available, and at times it could be cheaper than India? No, when I, when I import, I have to incur 50% customs duty. Okay. Import duty. Okay. I think it is 50%. But if you crush it for overseas market uh, and uh, like, you know. No, but it is very, very difficult to uh, show to the authorities that whatever I am importing mm -hmm. and I'm making oil and I'm exporting, it's very difficult, you know, and they will not agree and they'll issue notices. Okay. So, so that we'll have difficulties in claiming the uh, duty drawback, etc. Okay, but so the, somehow we want to be uh, very sure that we don't have issues oh, with the uh, authorities. Sir, uh, just uh, pardon my ignorance. Do you don't have an input-output norm for this industry, like you no know, two tons of seed is equal to one ton of oil, and so on and so forth. Very simple calculations. Like in, in the case of uh, I told you, uh, it ranges from thirty-one kgs to thirty-three kgs okay. for seventy-five kgs of seeds. Okay. It is it is about forty five percent or forty percent to forty five percent approximately. So the customs officials don't uh, take that one for like you know uh, issuing advance license and other things. Yeah, actually, to be very frank with you, uh, we have uh, see authorities always believe that uh, business people are not uh, trustworthy. Yeah. <laughs> so. We know that we are so sincere to what we are doing, but uh, authorities have been trained to consider business people as uh, 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 as uh, not. I mean, as people who do not um, follow rules and regulations. Yeah. Uh, as business people, as to they don't, they are not sincere. Mm -hmm. uh, they have been trained like that. You know, okay. it is very difficult to convince authorities that we are sincere. Right. So we want to be on the safer side. So your model is very, very like you know simple and uh, like you know and leveraging on India's strength. So that is actually like you know excellent. Sir, so staying again with quality only. We have covered the raw material aspect. The other two aspect is technology and and human resources, because those also like you know I feel they play a very very important role. Uh, uh, can you share like you know something on your technology uh, what what you have as an in process technology and also about like you know the human resources because uh, having this many decades of experience i'm sure like you know you would have like you know developed a system of uh, human resources development and carrying forward that we have uh, modern technologies being used in the cleaning of raw materials. Okay. We are equipments from the Bueller company. Okay. I think from Sweden or Switzerland or even Switzerland, from Switzerland. Germany. Yeah. Switzerland. Germany, yeah. Okay. So we have those uh, equipments and we clean so well. Okay. Uh, uh, you can't clean it further. So it is the cleaning of the raw material is done with all sincerity, right? Okay. Beyond that, we don't have uh, a big technological improvement, you know, because the oil that is crushed is traditional. We are not making refined oil. When we make traditional oil, we have the traditional methods. Okay. So, expeller method which you are using? Yeah. Expellers are used for crushing. Okay. So, in that case, like, you know, I'll be happy if you can visit and see for yourself. Sure, sure. Do you also definitely, sir? We will do that. Solvent extraction, you do it, sir? No. 
we don't involve any chemical whatsoever. Oh wow! So that means, like you know, about four to five percent of the oil will be there in the cake. Yeah, even more than that. So uh, if it, it, cake, the cake must be fetching good price. Yeah, forty rupees or fifty rupees per kilo. Uh, but that's a lot of oil to lose it actually. But why, why, why is that? Like you know, you don't want to go for uh, solvent extraction. Even for let's say, like you know, if it is no, we see that is. Uh, we will be happy if solvent extractors buy from us. We are not interested in that. Somehow, okay. somehow we tried, you know, we tried to do solvent extraction. We uh, did it from, uh, we outsourced okay. and we organized to get solvent extracted oil okay. and we found it very difficult to sell that. Okay. So, okay. see, we have a big market for cake. Okay. Suppose I have no market for cake, I have no choice but to go for solvent extraction. When I get 40 rupees and 50 rupees per kilo for my cake, why should I go for solvent extraction? Yeah, but you get 300 rupees per kg of oil, like 4% oil goes with that, right? Uh, see, that again becomes a refined oil. That is not my traditional oil. When I make refined oil, I will not get more than 70 rupees or 80 rupees. Maybe these days it is more expensive. Yeah. Normally, it has been 70 or 80 rupees for refined oil. And it may dilute your brand proposition, basically. Like, no Come again? It might dilute your brand proposition, like, you know, that's because if you don't want to be in that segment and it is better to be clear and stay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why we don't make check NI. Uh -huh. Aha, yeah. okay. You know, there is something called check NI. Uh, check NI, Amma. Check NI. We don't make it. Uh -huh. Because suppose I make check and I, it will be more expensive than my regular oil. And people may think that it is better than my regular oil. Okay. Because it is not. Okay. It is, it's more expensive. That's all. Right. Because it involves more labor. Mm -hmm. And it involves more electricity. Mm -hmm. So it is expensive because of that. But some people think that check and I is expensive because it is better quality. Yeah, until now I was thinking, I'm sorry, like, you know, because I used to think Czech and Anaka is very traditional. Uh, the, the, because the, the words they use, you no, know, Parambaryam, Czech and Nai, like, you know, these are something like, you know, which is, uh, which is, like, you know, uh, wrongly associated. I think, like, you know, it's more of uh, playing with the mind. Uh, so thanks for the clarity. So those who want Czech and Nai, mm -hmm. I tell them, mm -hmm. don't use a car. Don't use a bus. Take a bullock cart. Okay. Take a horse cart. Not the bus or not the two-wheeler. And uh, go for a traditional pot cooking. Don't use pressure cooker. Yeah. You go for, see, when you want a chicken knife, you throw your refrigerator out of your house. <laughs> but you need a refrigerator. True. Traditionally, there was no refrigerator. Yeah. When you accept a refrigerator, when you accept a pressure cooker, when you accept a car, you have to accept our expeller oil. That's what I say. Great. So uh, let me come to the uh, 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 part, like you know, which is very very important from the point of view of a branded player like you. How do you sustain the brand value proposition? Uh, basically, like you know. What, what is the way in which you keep investing in the brand? And how do you engage with the younger generations uh, uh, to like, you know, take a liking to this oil and like, you know, continue this strong? Because one is that what uh, the parents teach to their children. But these days people want like, you know, there is so much of competition from tasteless oil. And then on the other side, there is so much of uh, marketing from oils like olive oil. People are ready to pay five times more like, you know, and then like, you know, consume. So uh, take us through like, you know, these two aspects, engagement with the younger uh, generations as a brand and uh, uh, how do you keep the brand uh, alive and young and like, you know, uh, contemporary? In uh, Tamil Nadu, the most uh, popular chef happens to be Venkatesh Bhatt. Okay. Okay. The Venkatesh Bhatt has been using our groundnut oil, our sesame oil for the past 12 months okay. for his cooking show, cookery show. 
great. Okay. So that tells people that is it's a choice of the number one chef of Tamil Nadu. Great. And these videos are shown all over the world, right? Oh, right yeah. So I think uh, that is only the way we take our uh, uh, product to the market. We don't use the traditional methods of television advertising. Okay. Because there are 100 channels mm -hmm. and people don't uh, stick on to a channel when there are advertisements. Yeah, they switch. When we, when we came into the market, there was only one channel. Doodarshan. Doodarshan. That was in 1986. Yeah. And our advertisements very popular, were very popular yeah. because people did not have a remote in hand. Yeah. At that time, what you made was the right investment. Yeah, true. We are happy to let you know mm -hmm. that Doordarshan Tamil, uh -huh. Doordarshan Tamil and Idem were born together. Oh, great. We were born in the same time. Oh, great. So we grew together. Great. And then it was only one channel, you know. Yeah. Now there are more channels and uh, whenever there are advertisements, people go get up and go away for a for restroom or go away for having some food. So people do not watch advertisement. That is my contention. And uh, we have chosen a media mm -hmm. where we have uh, boards displayed a point of sale display of boards. Mm -hmm. That is at the retailer's end, we displayed huge boards with the lights. At 6.30, they switch on the boats and till about 7.30, I mean, till about 10 o'clock, the lights are kept on. Okay. So what happens, wherever our boats are, mm -hmm. people go for buying. Right. A normal, regular shop, after keeping our board, their business have been going up. Great. So we have boats all over Tamil Nadu mm -hmm. and uh, uh, approximately, I must say, we 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 have uh, about more than thousand plus, more than I must say, more than about three thousand retailers who have our boats. Three thousand in Tamil Nadu alone. And Tamil Nadu alone, about three thousand retailers mm -hmm. have our advertisement boats for which we pay no no rent. Are you, uh, just out of curiosity, are you on the e-commerce platform like Amazon and the Big Basket and all? See, for your information, Amazon and Big Basket cannot go without them. So, have you noticed some interesting trends in terms of like, you know, somebody from Assam suddenly like, you know, asking you like, you know, means like you're seeing the demand from like, you know, uh, either two markets which you have not reached out for various reasons. Are you seeing some like, you know, interesting trends in those e-commerce uh, websites? Which you yes. Like. For example, people from Jaipur, uh -huh. the locals of Jaipur, okay. call, call us and tell us that the sesame oil their state makes is substandard. Okay. And they say sesame oil that we make is much better. Wow. And there are locals from Rajasthan who buy our uh, tilka tel. Great. Okay. So that sort of experiences we have. And uh, of late, I came to know that the people in Australia uh -huh. uh, of Indian origin, mm -hmm. whether they are Tamils or even North Indians, mm -hmm. they all go for our sesame oil mm -hmm. to make dosas. Okay. For the because they, know, basically. they know from the Tamil Brotherhood, yeah, yeah. you get the best dosas with the sesame oil. Yeah. So even North Indians who are otherwise not used to sesame oil, mm -hmm. they buy sesame oil because they get that special uh, punch for dosa from sesame oil. So e-commerce has been a discovery for even like, you know, a well-entrenched brand like you in terms of extending your market envelope. Can I no, to be very frank, uh -huh. we need e-commerce because that is the modern trend. Okay. E-commerce cannot go without us because we are a popular brand. Okay. So it is a win-win basically. Like, you know, yeah. Okay. okay. We cannot avoid each other. 
See, they cannot go without us, and we have to start going with them. So it is mutually important that we don't ignore them and they don't ignore us. Uh, uh, on, on on the uh, marketing piece and the branding piece, like you know, how do you engage with the younger generation or the millennials? Have... No, I told you when Venkatesh but cooks. Okay. There are people all over the world who do not have their mother by their side. Okay. They have to refer to Venkatesh but and find out what is to be cooked and how. Okay. Suppose mother was available, the mother used to cook and the children need to watch. Right, okay. And mother is in a rural center and the children are in Bangalore and Hyderabad mm -hmm. or in Chennai. Mm -hmm. They have to go with people like uh, Venkatesh Bhatt, the chef. Now I got the connect. Yeah, thanks for they this. Go to the, they go to the YouTube and find out uh, what is to be done tomorrow for breakfast. Okay. They need to refer, yeah? yeah. So we had a, a boy of two year old who mm -hmm. visited our home. Mm -hmm. Suddenly he asked, where is Venkatesh Bhatt? <laughs> okay. <laughs> he thought Venkatesh Bhatt was cooking from our house. <laughs> That's very interesting. That's very interesting. That's a very powerful connect actually. Like, and for your information, yeah. uh, we got a surprise call from uh, somebody at uh, Bombay. Uh -huh. And when my uh, distributor was watching a movie, it was about 10 o'clock uh, in the night. Okay. And there was a phone call where people asked for two liters of idem oil. Okay. So my distributor cut the, I mean, disconnected. But the guy started calling him again and said, don't disconnect. Mm. This is a very important call. We need two liters of idem. You give me today, from Bombay, it will be flown to Delhi this night. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow morning by the first flight, it is going to Moscow. Mm -hmm. In about three days, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is having his breakfast in Moscow. Wow. For his breakfast in Moscow, we have the idli, ingredients for idli ready, sambar chutney ready. Mm -hmm. We have the powder for the chili powder, and but we do not have oil. So we immediately need it. This is the call from caterer of Bombay, wow. who needed to go to Moscow to cook for the Prime Minister of India. So I don't say that Prime Minister is my customer. I say the caterer of the Prime Minister prefers our Prime. I understood. I understood. So that's where, like, you know, people who value quality, you have been able to address them. And that is what is, like, you know, being the pillar of your brand strength. And one interesting yeah. thing is they are ready to pay any price. Yeah. You are in a segment where you have done so much, like, you know, on the product and the brand side, like, you know, and relatively due to uh, price. So having said that one, like, you know, businesses as such, especially traditional businesses like uh, uh, edible oils have been uh, like, you know, to intense uh, challenges, like, you know, uh, freight rates, for example, like, you know, and then like, you know, imported oil swings, et cetera, et cetera. Like, uh, uh, how do See, you look at the current uh, challenges to the business segment as it is? See, Tamil Nadu has seven crores of population, right? Okay. And I don't need all the seven crores to be my customers. True. My, I'm happy with the 10% of the market. I'm, I'm not able to supply the 10% of the market. So why do I bother about the 80% or 90% who buy, 80% of the people buy imported edible oils. Okay. So... I mean, if everybody is going to buy from me, I'll have a tough time. I'm happy there is competition from international companies. Okay, great. Now, uh, what you have said, like, you know, is by and large true when it comes to sesame oils. But in groundnut oil, there are so many players, including players like Safal in Karnataka. For example, like, you know, uh, this is a keyboard, Karnataka Oil Federation kind of thing. So when you compete with that kind of a brand, like, you know, which is a government promoted brand, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, how do you differentiate that? Because they will also claim that they are of superior quality and so on. See, government cannot uh, meet our quality standards. Okay. But they can because look at the government school and the private schools. Where do you put your children? Okay. 
<laughs> as simple as that. Okay. See, government runs institutions like IIT, IIM. Yeah. They are considered best in the world. Yeah. Otherwise, government is no match for the private sector. And that is the top uh, 0.5% or 1% of the people. Like, you know, that's what it is. So, very, very good. I don't know how government is able to run institutions like IIT and IIM. Because governments are known for messing up uh, things. Very substandard uh, quality. No? <laughs> See, for example, come to our municipal school. Mm. Nobody will put their children there. Mm. For example, the employed teachers of municipal schools, mm. they put their children in private schools. <laughs> yeah. What do you say about that? Yeah, yeah, true. Agree. I, I, I fully agree with you. So one question which I forgot, like, you know, a group like yours, like, you know, would have uh, definitely put a lot of efforts in community development and CSR activities. Uh, I would like to, like, you know, uh, spend some minutes around that part of it with your permission. Shall I? Yes, sir. See, we are uh, organizing a uh, monthly leadership camp. Is our CSR activity. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we bring about 32 students between age group 18 and 25 okay. and teach them not to go for a job. Okay. We teach them to become employers. Wow. And we call this Be an Entrepreneur Leadership Camp. So what do you do in that camp? So, so far we have covered 320 students. And for three days, there is a residential camp, mm -hmm. and we have experts to guide them. Mm -hmm. And out of the 320, about 50, about 50, have become entrepreneurs already. And more are on the way to become entrepreneurs. One in seven. And, and every batch, we select two of the best participants and send them to Singapore for about, for about four days for an interaction with the industries there. So we have completed 10 such programs and we have one program every month. I think this is the best I can do for the community. Job creators we need. Yes. Yeah, we are, we are developing entrepreneurs. See, we are, we are running a school for entrepreneurs. This is equivalent to a school for entrepreneurs. Okay. It's equivalent to an IAM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, three days I am. How many of them are girls in this 300? They easily 50%. Oh. 50% wow. are girls. And what is the selection criteria like? 18 to 25. Uh -huh. The age group is 18 to 25. Okay. And number two, they must uh, they must be inclined to become an entrepreneurs. Should they have demonstrated something? Yes, come again. Should they have demonstrated something like you know? Not necessarily, not at all, not at all. Okay. See, it's very simple. They pay about two thousand five hundred each. Mm -hmm. Our company spends about eleven thousand each. Okay. So that is about uh, that is about two hundred thousand every month we are spending as a CSR activity. That's excellent. That's very very different, and uh, that's what the country needs actually. Like, because exactly. Prime Minister also yeah, talked believe about me, believe me, mm -hmm. uh, one of the participants, mm -hmm. uh, after the program, she said, mm -hmm. I joined this program because I wanted to fly to Singapore. That oh. is why I joined this program. Okay. But after going through the three days of uh, the program, mm -hmm. now I have decided to buy an aircraft and fly. Oh. That's a transformation. That's a self-confidence also. Like, you know, I mean, no, that shows yeah. that she considers that she can become an entrepreneur yeah, and yeah. then buy an aircraft. That's right. That's right. Amazing. Amazing. We used to have uh, in our engineering days, like, you know, this entrepreneurship development program. Uh, it, is called, it used to be called the EDP and it was restricted to engineering students, like, you know, from select institutions during those days. I'm so happy that like you know you're trying to do that one like you know uh, in, in your way and opening up to like you know people 
with like you know multiple skills and not necessarily to so some people in the elite institutions amazing sir i have exhausted almost all the questions now i leave it to you for your final comments if you want any comments you can you can just share it with us and then we will close it to you sir see i would say to the new entrepreneurs yeah that uh, you must take up the business which gives you joy and satisfaction you know don't choose a business because somebody told you choose a business that motivates you see sachin tendulkar is uh, so popular he is called a god of cricket because he loves cricket yeah so you love something and do it you are going to be successful as far as i am concerned i love marketing and that's the reason our company has been successful and my younger brother loves engineering and production oh okay and that is why we are successful in the producing end so we are a beautiful combination where he is producing and i am marketing great so my point is do the job you love you don't have to work a day in your life wonderful okay. wonderful that is the message that i want to give to the listeners thank you so much i don't feel like ending this interview but i have to stop somewhere it was so wonderful talking to you uh, sir i am happy i am happy and this is second time i am being interviewed by the sesame world yeah but uh, last time there was a slip that like you know there was some mishap on the recording side we have no i don't i don't I, i don't object i am happy to talk to you again thank you so much for your time sir thank all you. the best Look and i'll be happy meeting you in person and also like you know coming to your factory very soon yeah that will be good yeah. i'll be happy if two of you the both of you can send me your address yeah name and phone number okay you can send it to me you have my phone numbers yes sir and my even my whatsapp number if you send them to me i'll be happy to give you monthly dispatches of oil pulling Okay. oil pulling is every day morning you must take 10 ml of 10 ml of sesame oil okay. put in your mouth okay. and do oil pulling great sir we will do that sir we will do that you do this we do this you don't have to go to hospitals great this is a uh, traditional uh, uh, therapy traditional therapy which has been forgotten and we take great efforts to bring this back you believe me in ludhiana okay. we have monthly meetings uh -huh. where we propagate oil pulling okay. to the people in punjab okay because i have a friend who has benefited with oil pulling and he is propagating oil pulling in ludhiana of all the places so you are you are actually like you know now planting ambassadors who will carry on this message because it has got so much great you are right we will share that uh, our details like you know as yeah. you suggest not only you but your entire team batch your fellow staff members and all those thank you thank we'll you happy to send you thank you so much thank you so much have a wonderful day sir thank you so much namaskar sir thank you welcome and i would like to know your names shri vatsava ganapati vatsa shri vatsa ganapati and we have met already right yes yes and what about uh, shravan you Shravanti. What about Swapna? Swapna has left for the day, sir, because she has to go a long way. So, like you know, so. Okay, she has escaped. <laughs> no, no, no. Like you know, uh, she takes care of the marketing side. So we are in charge of the uh, the content and the Good. publication. Thank you very much. Thank you so my, much. My my best wishes to Swapna, who has organized this. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Have a great day, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. we have to close some here